Well, how do there, chums? Does I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm going to be bringing you some footage of Nightingale yet again, but this time with a focus on the monsters within inside of Nightingale. But just to get started, just for those that don't know what Nightingale is, here we go, I'll bring it up on screen right now. This is over on Steam. So over on Steam, it gives you a little bit of a synopsis of what Nightingale is. It says here, set out on a journey of survival and adventure into the mysterious and dangerous Fey realms of Nightingale. Become an intrepid realm walker and venture forth along with friends as you explore, craft, build, fight across a visually stunning gas lamp fantasy world love it freaking awesome it says here come in first half of 2023 add to your wish list okay i've got some news towards the end of this video so stay tuned for that because it does go into there may be a bit of a delay but just to give you guys out there in a view of us a little bit of a taste of what's inside of the world of nightingale i'm going to play you the trailer You're alone in the realms, I'm afraid. The portals are a mess. Not even sure if Nightingale made it. Given how fragile you humans are, I'd say that staying fed, dry, and rested should be your priority. If the portal arch is inactive, you'll need to make realm cards from rare resources. Once you have realm cards, you can activate the portal. Beware, though. Foul things lurk in the interrealmic void, waiting to get in. Be ready with your axe pick. Okay, so that gives you a pretty good overview of what Nightingale is all about, or at least I hope it does. Now, there's a couple of elements about Nightingale that really excite me. One of them being the amount of creatures and things that you saw, even just in that little mini trailer there. I mean, you saw like wild boars, giant spiders, weird sort of goblin-y type things, things that are called the Bound, I believe. Um, yeah, so we'll touch on that as we look at some of these creatures, or at least some of the bigger creatures of Inside Nightingale. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go and have a look at some of the creatures. Okay, so over on the Nightingale's sort of um, YouTube channel, if you click on Shorts, there's a couple of shorts here which are all just monsters. Let me just move this out of the way for a second. So yeah, you've got lots of different shorts here. So I'm going to hit up this creature here, which is like an Ent or a Tree Ent, something like that anyway. Now, if you go and cut down... Oh. I'll let her the Jotun is an elemental creature of the realms. Chop down trees at your own peril, for these inconspicuous wood form spirits hide among the forest and fiercely defend their domain. Realm walkers may find that bargaining is a safer approach for special rewards, while more brutish explorers may exploit the creature's aversion to fire. The Jotun is an elemental creature of the realms. Chop down trees at your own peril, for these inconspicuous wood form spirits hide among the forest. Very hard to, for me to tell when that's actually looped, people. But basically, if you're cutting down too many trees, all of a sudden a tree is going to pop out the ground with a freaking giant creature attached to the end of it. Now, you can hack that creature up and get more materials if you really want to, or run for a freaking cover. <laughs> I really like this next one. This is the Bandersnatch. This is just a meanie. It, it just appears. But here we go. Let's, let's bring this one up. With its rat-like tail, reptilian legs, and bifurcated mouth, Bandersnatches are a grisly blend of many wretched beasts. They use echolocation not only to navigate, but also to coordinate with their deadly hunting pack. Players may even be able to pick up on their bat-like shrieks before they attack. 
Right, so that's the Bandersnatch. Now, I really like all the sort of hair and movement that this creature has. And the way it moves is quite creepy. It's sort of... Yeah, very cool, isn't it? Very cool. You think that one's creepy? Check out the harpies. So the harpies, they almost look like people until you get close to them. Yeah, I suppose the first time you... But to be honest, we've seen them in the trailers, so how much of a surprise will they be? Harpies are bewitching scavengers that stalk the realm, stealing precious items from unsuspecting realm walkers. Using a human-like appearance as a demonic disguise, these deadly pack hunters ensnare even the most sharp-witted of adventurers. <laughs> I had a school teacher that looked like one of them. Yeah, pretty darn freaking nasty looking thing, isn't it? Now, a little bit, you know, like when you're cutting down trees, you might get one of these atons or whatever they call them appear. Well, there's this creature as well, the Carnoot, which appears if you kill too many creatures in an area. So I'm either harvesting resources or harvesting creatures. You may be unlucky enough to come across one of these guys. The mighty Carnoot, commonly known as the Demon Deer, is neither a demon or a deer. It is a realm spirit, which is occasionally caught wandering Feylands. These creatures are fiercely protective of local wildlife and use strong magic connection to regrow fell trees. As long as humans live in harmony with nature, the demon deer will largely ignore them. Kill a creature nearby or attack the spirit directly, and you'll be lucky to make it out alive. The mighty Carnut, calmly. Pretty darn freaking epic, right? Okay, so now they're bringing out these short videos of these creatures. So if any of those have grabbed your attention or you want to see more of these creatures, then hit on up their channel, give them a subscribe. I've got the notification bell on. I will be bringing more news as and when it comes on Nightingale because I am extremely excited for this title. So yes, the creatures are one part of why I'm excited, but I'm also excited in the procedural element and the generation of wells on the opposite sides of portals are based on what tarot cards that you put inside of the portals. If you don't know what I mean, they actually call them realm cards in this. I'll play you part one and part two since we're on the shorts right now, so at least you can see them. There you go. Let's hit this one up. Here's how players can travel to new Fey realms in our upcoming game, Nightingale. Unlike the Fey, who can traverse mystical portals with ease, magic doesn't come naturally to humans. So you'll need to gather various resources from the Fey Wilds to create powerful arcane magic, also known as realm cards. Then you can mix realm cards to open portals and travel into unique procedurally generated realms. More details on this in part two. Here's how players can That's part one, part two. When it comes to realm cards, your choices matter. There are three types of realm cards in Nightingale, biome, major, and minor. First, you'll need to select a biome card to set the environment, like a forest or a desert. Then you can choose if you want to use major or minor cards, which will influence things like creatures, weather, resources, and difficulty. So, where would you like to travel? When it comes to Man, I love those sort of worlds that you saw at the end there. That planet just hanging in the background, the Aura Borealis. Oh, what sort of worlds would you like to make out there in the Viewerverse? I would like to... You get what's called a Respite Realm? So you can make your own respite realm, a place where you can go and sort of grow and maybe have your own little lobby there and other players can come join you before you go out on an expedition or something and try and get yourself to Nightingale. But yeah, the respite realm, the sort of realm that I would like to build, I'd like to build something a little bit like this, but I'd like a spacey sort of feel to the actual skybox, have planets hanging in the background or something. But yeah, let me hit you up this. Yeah. I would like to make a nice little relaxing farm type ranch type place with maybe an aura borealis or a planet hanging in the background or something but I'd imagine I'm going to have to put in a lot of work to find the realm cards I need to generate myself a nice respite type area of play so yeah, I don't know how many players you're limited to most of the footage I've seen so far has about four players running around together which 
I think is a fair size for a team, but it'd be awesome to be able to put together a crew and sort of just chillax inside of this sort of environment and go out on expeditions where we go hunting for strange and weird creatures. It'd almost be like being in Supernatural, wouldn't it, in a roundabout way? I really like the sort of aesthetics as well, you know, all the sorts of clothing and stuff that goes into this too. It looks very Victorian steampunk-esque, and I quite like the steampunk-esque type vibe if you haven't gathered by this freaking giant hat on my head right now peeps and the view of us so yeah i am very much looking forward to this game for multiple reasons and if it's one that's on your radar let us know inside of the comments that'd be awesome but yes hopefully it's going to come out next year now i did say i've got some news on a little bit of a delay so if you pop on over to the twitter page and twitter space for at the play it's at play nightingale yeah, hit them up with a follow. I've turned on the notifications again on this, so if there is any more news in way of this, I will be sure to let you know. So here we go. It addresses you as a realm of walkers. We've made the difficult decision to delay Nightingale's early access release to the first half of 2023. I've signed up for that. Hopefully I can get on board with that. That would really be cool. We have more news on specific timings at a later stage. The move is based on two considerations. The first is an upgrade to the Unreal Engine 5. After reviewing the potential of Unreal Engine 5 has to offer, we've decided on upgrading now rather than waiting until late after release. If you hit up their YouTube channel, they've got a video around the Unreal Engine 5 and what it brings to a Nightingale. Two elements of being, the main, main two, is Nanites, which is multiple little triangular polygons, and it looks freaking awesome. If you haven't played the Matrix demo, you would see that in action, Nanite. It's freaking phenomenal. And also Lumen, which gives all the sorts of ambient and real lighting effects at a very low cost to the actual engine. So it's going to give the very nice shadow effects, very nice lighting effects, it's going to look really nice. I mean, it looks nice already, but it's going to look freaking sublime once it goes over to Unreal Engine 5. Yeah, like I say, hit that subscribe if you want more news on this, because I will be bringing it to you. Second, Inflaction Games has committed to delivering the best possible experience and fulfilling the promises of what Nightingale's universe of realms have to offer players. To achieve that, the additional time will allow the team to make key improvements, bolster content and polish gameplay. In the coming weeks, you'll see more game and development updates from the team until then we thank you for your continued support and enthusiasm for what we're making it may take a little longer for the mystical fey portables to open but we appreciate you taking this journey with us brilliant okay i'm going to jump back over to steam and just to end this off i think i'm going to hit up the other trailer here so you can see a little bit more of the fey and of the world of nightingale because i am i am excited for this i don't overly get excited for games anymore you know Night nightingale has got all the tick boxes for me i love cre i love open worldy games giant creature games and games that have procedural elements and base building and yeah here we go Since the day the portal network collapsed, stranding us in these realms, we have searched for a way home. Lost and alone in the dangerous labyrinth of fantastical worlds. Welcome to the lands of fame. Portal is a chance for salvation. Uniting the lost survivors. Or leading us deeper into this nightmare. Nightingale, our beacon of hope. But beyond our reach. As long as we stand together, our journey will unite us. You, the realm walkers, are all that is left. Well, 
there you go, people. I mean, I did say the biggest crew that I thought I saw was four, but at the end there, you could see that was easily seven. So, yeah, who knows how big a team that you can actually form with this. And you may have noticed there that there was one interaction where they're making friends with a giant, and the next minute, there's a giant smashing the town. So it looks like there might be tameable large creatures inside of this game, or at least ones you can make pacts with. Or upset them, and they might come and sit on your house. <laughs> so there is that. There we go, peeps. And that's everything that I've got for you um, today on um, Nightingale. And I hope you've enjoyed this stream. And if you have, please let us know in the comments. And yeah, like I say, I'll be bringing this to my channel. Sadly, at the moment, though, it is PC only. And uh, yeah, I'll be hooking it up on Steam. So yeah, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this game. Until next time, people, you guys and the viewers have been freaking awesome. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.